I, I think I was earning more in a month than my father earned in five years. Few Bollywood movies that we worked for, Dil to Pagal Hai was there, Chal Mere Bhai, Tarzan Ravanda Ka, Saho. Why do you think that there are only few DC design like studios? They have to be product of Forzheim or Art Center. Like me, they have to work in General Motors or Volkswagen for some years. And like me, they have to attain sophistication and maturity over 20, 25 years to be able to succeed. But here I made a big error in the sense I trusted a customer as an investor. He gave me 50 crores. I had to imbibe the technical knowledge of material and processes and that enabled me to take risk of designing cars in 1993. Hi everyone, my name is Saket and this is the brand new episode of the Design Podcast. Well, today's guest is very special, very popular and he needs no introduction. His name is Mr. Dilip Chabria. He is popularly known as the designer, founder and the owner of DC Designs, which has created a massive impact in the automotive industry for past many, many years. He is someone whose designs has been featured in multiple Bollywood movies. He has designed and created vanity vans for many many Bollywood actors and he has been popularly known for creating exciting interior designs for the cars. He is probably the first design entrepreneur India has ever seen. That's why I have taken this opportunity to learn more about design entrepreneurship. If you are a designer who is thinking beyond his or her current job and considering design entrepreneurship as the future, this is a podcast for you. We have talked about what are the pros and cons of design entrepreneurship. Uh, can a designer run a business? If he is running a business, what are the skills he will be demanded? How to get that first high ticket client? How to negotiate with them? And how to create a sustainable long term vision which will help you to create that brand. We have talked about so many things including some of the unfortunate incidences which has happened with DC Designs. When you are running a business for so long, you are bound to have some failures and we have asked and learned about that as well. This is a valuable podcast and I must say I am very very proud of this podcast. Also a quick shout out to our sponsor today, Kafal Studio. Kafal Studio is founded and run by one of my friends, Arunav and he is a good friend of mine. He was also there on the design podcast and they are doing something extraordinary with their venture called as Kafal Studio. I have been interacting and discussing design with Arunav for a very long time now and I must say that his courses are highly recommended. All the links are given in the description below. Go check out. They have a cohort coming up and if you want to enroll for that, you can use this code and you'll get an additional discount. Having said that, let's begin the podcast. Hello, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you for doing this. This means a lot to me, my team and all the aspiring designers who are watching this uh, because, you know, we have always seen you as an aspiration, uh, someone who has made an impact in the design industry. So I am looking forward to this conversation. Very, very excited. So am I. I want to relive my journey as well. It gives me a lot of pleasure to reminisce about the past, uh, you know, the early days and the struggles and the challenges. And I should tell this to our audience also that uh, like this is the second time I'm meeting you. But every time I'm seeing you, I'm meeting you, I see this flare of excitement and you know that uh, very positive attitude towards design and everything. So that's that's very wonderful. And I'm <laughs> before going into so many other questions, I, I just want to understand how do you keep yourself motivated? Okay, so good question. Uh... You know, when your name is on the block, it's an eponymous company mm. in that sense, uh, which means you cannot afford to fail wow. because okay. it's a societal stigma. And, you know, in the past, most successes have been eponymous. Mm. Uh, not because we are egoistic or anything, but because I, I personally took uh, the cue from the Italian design houses, which were named after the founders. Right. That's how I named the company. Mm. And therefore, when you have your name on the block <clears throat> and you can't fail, you come to terms with your life and say, okay, let me do the best job. Let me do an honest day's work. Uh, let me create something which will, you know, add or consolidate whatever I've done in the past in a much bigger way. The simple fact is that when your design is one aspect 
or one field where you are doing today something which never was done yesterday. Mm. So there is no familiarity. Right. Um, you know, like we don't wear the same clothes, we don't eat the same food, and we don't have the same girlfriends. So obviously, <laughs> it's something new that comes across all the time, and that's that's what keeps you motivated. It keeps you going. For me, it's uh, more so when I draw a line. Since I have a manufacturing unit, I can see that manifest into a physical form. Mm. And that gives me a very big high. It is akin to being on drugs or on alcohol without being on them. So what better thing than that? Wow. What a beautiful way to start this podcast because already I am seeing a lot of, you know, wisdom and that uh, years of experience, the way you are talking. Uh, so today the topic is uh, design entrepreneurship. Sure. Uh, so we'll be talking about so many things related to that. Uh, but before jumping into all those questions, uh, I just want to understand out of curiosity, maybe of the child in me who is like yeah. a fan of you, I <laughs> just want to understand, uh, you started this journey uh, many years back and uh, how did it all start because we are talking about the time when awareness around design was not that much and during that time you decided to pursue this field and also decided to you know commit your entire life yes. work yes. into it so how did it start so you know um, i graduated from art center which is the and you must be aware that it's a preeminent design school of across course. the world yeah. still is you know yes and uh, having uh, passed off from there i i worked with general motors and i felt uh, very disillusioned because very bureaucratic, 1500 okay. designers and you will be able to design a, a hubcap or a handle, door handle after you attain seniority and seniority is after 20, 30 years. So I was not willing to wait. I think by that time, um, I came from an affluent family. So I was exposed to a lot of publications. You know. And when I came back to India, uh, I was about 20, 30 years old and uh, I went into the manufacture of accessories, automotive accessories. So A, I was an automotive designer, B, I had worked with General Motors and C, my father had an uh, electronic component factory. So I told him, give me some space, I want to try making accessories for Fiat and Ambassadors with contemporary design. Nobody from the West would have developed accessories for Fiat and Ambassadors because it was a very small market. Mm. But here I was with the capability and the passion to design accessories for Fiat and Ambassadors. And my father allowed me that and when I did that, it was a stupendous success because the market was so starved of something contemporary for those cars. Mm. And I did very well, uh, exceedingly well. Uh, I, I think I was earning more in a month than my father earned in five years. Oh, wow. And you're talking about which year? I'm talking of 1982. 82. Oh. And uh, so uh, my father then gave the whole factory to me and said, you do what you want. And I attained uh, financial freedom through that business in 10 years time uh, and the knowledge of since I was making accessories the technical knowledge of material and processes uh, I had to imbibe mm. you know, and that enabled me to take risk of designing cars in 1993. Wow okay and uh, I since I was highly passionate about cars and I had a factory in uh, Mumbai Midtown. I had a gypsy which was bought in 1986. And I fell in love with the car for two, three years hence. I went to a local garage and told them, you know, I'm a designer. Allow me to design a car. Give me your people. I'll pay for it and give me your space. But I want the full freedom. And he was a nice bloke. So he did that. And that car, every time it went somewhere, drew hordes of onlookers and compliments 
and I sold that car for five times the cost. I did another car, sold it again at four or five times the cost. And I thought this is a good business to have, to be in. First of all, you get fame and you get money. Hmm. And so in 93, I decided to venture into my own setup. And I remember my parents and my wife saying, are you going crazy? Somebody will come to you with a Maruti 1000 because at that time Maruti 1000 was the, the car, you know. Yeah. And give you f five lakhs as much as a car, as a Mar Maruti car. And wait for three, four months, you must be stupid. And I was very confident because I had already sold two cars at that price. So in such a large country, you know, deprived country of new models, I felt that there will be enough people for a small unit to survive. And that's how I actually started DC Design in 1993. Primarily to answer your question, it was uh, it was about the conviction that I had in my capability and also the uh, conviction that if you do something unique, which, which is still the yardstick today, you will have enough takers. You know? mm. Money is never the issue. Wow. Actually, that's uh, when you are saying that uh, it makes you, you know, think about the current times where you see a car which is worth very minimal and then there are cars which are, you know, multiple X yeah. of that amount and every car or every price tag, there is a customer. Yes. And uh, even if you consider a microscopic minority who want to be distinct or who want change, even if you consider a micro, microscopic minority, um, not even one hundredth of one percent or one thousandth of one percent, it's still a big volume. You know, as long as you're the only player and if you have attained the pedigree and the brand and the domain knowledge and the customer uh, satisfaction, you'll never go out of business. Okay. So, uh, once you decided that, okay, this is what you want to do in 93, you registered probably the company DC Design. So, uh, how did you get your first clients? Because uh, the topic is design entrepreneurship. Yeah. and most of the designers, like I have a few friends who have started their freelancing entrepreneurial journey and uh, their biggest challenge is to get that, you know, first three, four customers. So I was very fortunate that I was designing cars and cars are a very dynamic road going objects. Uh, you know, it's not like a product that is lying in the office or home because mm. that doesn't get exposed. So I, I was fortunate in that I decided to do a car and as I said, I sold these first two cars. I remember when I sold the first two cars, I had a um, center, center spread a large article in Times of India, oh. somewhere in 93, uh, because I was a new kid on the block. You know, it was very unique for everyone that how can you design cars? I mean, you, you were actually, uh, you know, doing away with all the original parts and you're making your own parts. So, you know, the journalists then yeah. uh, were very intrigued. And that gave me a, 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 a kind of some awareness. But the main thing is that, you know, if you are convinced about your craft, you have to invest to show something. Okay. You have to invest. What so, do you mean by that? So, I had to invest in my own cars to do something that I believed in. Ah, okay. I didn't have to... I didn't want to wait for a customer understood so when when that when i did that so i had to take risk on myself so as i said i had become financially independent i could afford to take the risk so it's not all accidental it's all planned hmm. you know if you want to design cars you must have that capacity to invest how will you invest so go to a market like accessories which are which is a mainstream market and you have a distribution network so, you know, you it, you build on all those things. Mm. Yeah, essentially, uh, in Art Center, what I learned was uh, that there are two key aspects for a designer to have to succeed. One is leadership. Mm. Second is financial acumen. Mm. Now, by that, uh, our role model in the school was you have to be Leonardo da Vinci. You have to be, uh, you know, artist 
engineer, marketer, and mm. financier. If you imbibe that, then you 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 design a car. Most designers I find they are very, you know, uh, they live in an ivory tower. They'll do sketches which are not relevant, or they'll Photoshop it, or they'll take from the net. They are not very relevant. You have to understand who is your buyer going to be. Mm. So you got to have the marketing uh, knowledge uh, of what you shouldn't do. and that comes with uh, you as a designer being an all round not just single dimension designer mm. you have to have global knowledge so for me um, you know i i'll tell you that today i must be i must have subscribed to over 500 magazines but the magazines that i read most are business magazines Oh wow! Not car magazines or not design magazines. So that gives you the knowledge of what is happening across the world, mm. or what is new and what is not new. I think if you have all that tied up, you will succeed. Actually, uh, yeah. Even in current community, like all the designers I know, uh, they lack this biz- business expertise yeah. or you know inclination. They are always, as you said, a single dimensional designers, including me many of many times. uh because uh, you don't get that overall picture or you you behave like an artist who would yeah. like to sit yeah. at one place sketch beautiful things and all that yeah. uh, why does that happen what do you think like you must have seen so many designers like that yeah so i think uh, as i said their schooling uh has been you know unfortunately this is a new field in that sense and we don't have competent educators mm. you know they all read and duplicate educators r and d is read and duplicate so you know uh, they are not inculcated with that kind of philosophy and what i have seen when you tell something no no i don't know about this i am i am just a designer i can't i don't know how to design this mm. so you have to be willing to go into the depth of it you have to be willing to compromise maybe your creativity a little bit to, to talk to engineers understand how they do it and then next time do what they are doing mm. so you know um, people tell me i mean i'm uh, that you're less of a designer and more of an engineer because you design something but you're building it mm that's not a designer's job designer's job is surfacing hmm you are actually building it with mechatronic movements with its disparate technologies and that's what it it would take a designer to be accepting that hmm probably they don't want to take a headache or what i don't know but if you want to be rich and famous you have to produce and manifest physically what you draw Mm. by just drawing or uh, doing a computer model is not going to get you anywhere mm. so entrepreneurship is key make in india is key so you know and believe me once they are willing in the mind to do that once they have done a couple of months they'll be hooked on that mm. they'll be easily able to do it okay so what you are trying to say just to summarize basically an entrepreneur design entrepreneur should not be a single dimension no. person he should have an overview he should have some business acumen he should have some inclination towards design at the same time he should have uh, a capability to you know visualize yeah. it into the yeah. so, reality so so maybe you know because you turn as a designer you turn out 100 sketches a day probably you uh-huh. know, or whatever 50 sketches a day you should un- understand what is metallurgy hmm what is deep draw what is polymer technology hmm. what is glass technology what are the limitations of each one once you do that your drawing also will reflect feasible feasibility which is yeah. not otherwise esoteric Mm. And I think that's the key. Uh, no design school actually teaches you that, mm. and that's where the lacuna is. Uh, 
unlike in the US or Germany, they have the apprentice apprentice program. So, you know, after you do the design in the middle of the design course, you go and work in a factory and learn all these things, you know. So I think it will happen in India, but it's to most of our educational facilities, as I said, I'm I'm pretty uh, disappointed at the quality of educators. Pretty disappointed. So they will take whatever is available on the net and you know cook up something and then teach you, but that's not the way to go. Hmm. Actually, uh, what you said is right. Even I have observed that that manufacturing and materials, what you were saying, material and manufacturing related things, uh, is kind of ignored uh, while teaching design in colleges. So most of the students are very good at uh, sketching beautiful yeah. cars yeah. and everything. Yeah. But uh, when you ask them, like, which material is it going to be? Is it going to be polymer or metal? What will be the manufacturing process? They will get confused. And I think if students are listening to this, uh, I think they should get this important insight about design that it's not just beautiful sketching. It's also about realizing it into the physical, practical, yeah, yeah. feasible world. So, uh, awesome. Yeah, I think, I think uh, if you see these beautiful sketches, it actually goes down in the waste paper basket because if they are working in a car company, the engineers are going to shoot him down. <laughs> and it actually happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. There's a war between designers and engineers. This is, this is bullshit, it cannot be done. But if he had that knowledge, he, his design would have been tempered or moderated to make it realizable. Hmm. Awesome. So, now that you have touched upon all these aspects of design, entrepreneurship. Uh, I am very curious to understand because when DC design was launched, uh, I think it gained its, you know, mass uh, popularity after a very popular Tarzan the Wonder Car. Yeah. And uh, at least people from my generation, we have grown up looking at that car. I think that car kind of built a little bit of awareness about, okay, sketching cars or designing cars is some kind of a profession. And then supercars kind of look like that, you know, it had yeah. bold color. So, I am very curious to understand how did that happen? Like from, you know, having this very nice settled uh, DC design brand and then jumping into a Bollywood movie. How did that connection happen and what was the vision? So, uh, you know, um, there are quite a few Bollywood movies that we have worked for, Dil To Pagal Hai was there. Is it? Yeah, okay. Dil To Pagal Hai, Shah Rukh's car was my car, the red one. Ah, okay. And uh, that was a gypsy. And then uh, Chal Mere Bhai, Tarzan the Wonder Car, and then Saho. Hmm. All the cars in Saho were ours. Okay. So when, uh, the, see, why they come to us is because they want something new on the screen. Hmm. Again, films have to be creative, you know, something that the viewers will say, wow, I've never seen this car. Hmm. So when the producers uh, or the directors of uh, Tarzan the Wonder Car came, they narrated the script and it was based on, uh, you know, the protagonist uh, was killed and taking a rebirth and all that. Not real, but uh, his son mm. actually ah. resurrects the car. And I, I asked them, what is the essence? Uh, why you want to make the car? So we want to make money. <laughs> and what is the money part? They said, the customer or the view or the ticket goer should see the movie twice and thrice. Okay. Then it's considered a success. So they came to me actually for an old, older looking car. And I said that older looking car is not going to create that curiosity because people have always seen it for years mm. together. So they agreed to me and I think that's their strength. So I said, we need to create a car that looks futuristic, looks super car but not a Ferrari or a Lamborghini because people know that, you mm. know, they see on the net and all that. But uniquely distinctive. More so, the shape has to be so complex that uh, a youngster like you who comes home, he should be attempting to draw it. Oh, wow. And it should be very difficult to draw. <laughs> so, he goes back to the theatre to draw. So, again and, to understand. And, yeah, yeah. So, that was the essence of it. And even wow. if you see today the car is 21 years old. 
it still doesn't date ah yeah it, it doesn't look dated true true so that was the essence of tarzan the mandaka and that really gave us a lot of mileage uh, i'm told that is the number one grossing movie on in on television ahead of three idiots and others oh wow continuously oh wow since 15 years is number one i think there was a report in economic times which i i, I always knew that because the producers were in touch with me but when economic times listed those first was uh, tarzan the wandaka and second was uh, three idiots and then third was with, i think two three other films i think uh, a big part of that credit goes to the car and you of course yeah, yeah, i mean people see it for the car yeah exactly in fact when when uh, the the car was produced uh, they didn't uh, they didn't they realized that the hero of the car the hero of the movie the car hmm and that is why they gave more prominence to the car where the script was that the car had only 5 or 10 minutes okay. they gave more uh, the thing to the car <laughs> it overpowered ajay devgan i guess yeah <laughs> okay uh, now that uh, you have this brand and uh, after that i think probably after these movies uh, you got uh, projects with celebrities especially the vanity vans yeah. and uh, i think there also uh, you know lot of people got awareness about yeah. what is interior designing and what can be you know yeah. possibilities with the interior design and i think when dc design when you say dc design it's quite synonymous with uh, you know very flamboyant and very uh, elite sort of interior designs and probably vanity vans so how did you shift into interiors flamboyant edgy futuristic uh, all this all these adjectives no we didn't shift into it Man, in fact the one of the first projects that we did first project mm-hmm. when i started dc design was a vanity product for bal thakre oh wow first okay. so i was quite exposed to that but when you do for film stars you get you know written about and notice so we decided to go into interiors uh, 80 90% of our business comes from interiors hmm. because now when you are doing exteriors you are not adding any value it's just making a different shape hmm. which not many people considering the range of cars available now that attraction is not as strong as it was in 93 because there were limited range of cars hmm. and exterior you cannot get any value but interior you adding a lot of value of comfort privacy and things like that mm. so our essence has been of interiors in fact i started with exteriors that was my passion and interiors were you know kind of also ran and we got a lot of criticism that your exteriors are fantastic but your interiors are you know not so good okay okay and i took it to heart Well, I I think subconsciously I worked so much on interiors that today we are considered the best interiors in the world, not among the best. Wow, the best interiors in the world. So you know when you have and it interior very difficult for others to uh, copy. Very difficult. Hmm. The in a car the interior development cost is three times that of exterior. Okay, because there are many components that go together. Right. Uh, thousands of components thousands of parts and you know ergonomics uh, and all that and uh, safety blah 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 so we have mastered that and we like to keep it that way because the va- the value or the uh, you know your value of uh, yield or revenue per square foot is higher on interior than exteriors okay so we do the exteriors if we are doing an interior and it needs an exterior change but not mm. otherwise but the primary focus is interior interiors. design okay that's worldwide now it's all yeah. interiors okay exterior is you know for your viewers is 10 90% regulation 10% creativity ab you 10% mein aap kya karoge you can't change the position of lights ah. you can't change the position of overhangs you can't change the position of length and breadth and height of the car what do you do correct interior uh, you can do a lot <laughs> yeah actually no and interiors you can give that experience and i have always wondered this uh the exterior part it's fine everybody likes that you know beautiful looking car in front of their house but i think most of the time the owner 
is spending inside the yeah. car i was going to tell you that <laughs> i was going to tell you that he's spending most of the time inside the car and for a designer the maximum scope is on the interior as i said there are so many elements in the dashboard itself there are so many elements yeah. there's switch gear instrumentation uh, glow box air vents and it's such a small piece and it's very difficult to do interiors very difficult to master the interior of, of which people are willing to pay you top price mm. you can anybody can do it even a carpet can do interior but nobody will buy it because it's all simplistic so uh, now that we are talking about uh, design entrepreneurship businesses around design and uh, you actually very nicely articulated the way you uh, explained what and all is required uh, why do you think that there are only few dc design like studios who are you know daring to do something like this Wh- why so you know uh, ever since i started uh, first of all i don't consider not, not that uh, for me the more uh, the design studios are there the better it's for business because they will grow right but unfortunately that's not the case most wind up in 2 3 years time because they are destroying value nobody is adding value okay now why they are not adding value is you know they are youngsters having s- stars in their eyes they don't understand this domain knowledge required for a car or designing something is very very deep hmm. and unless you have uh, education or knowledge worked with the uh, car companies you will not able to understand you know you'll make something i am sure with i mean if you can understand mahindra design closed pinnacle design closed they are the, the big daddies yeah they couldn't survive hmm. so why is it now because if they are dependent on designers who are only single dimensional uh how will they get orders hmm are they able to excite the customer and will the customer go to them just because they are 10 or 20% cheaper hmm. remember they are giving the asset no hmm. so you know some will go but they mostly end up in i think in the last 30 years there must be at least 100 such design dc design uh, uh, you know pretenders having uh, started and closed okay so because how do you how do you ensure that you creating value why would a customer come to you hmm. if it's something better than the original but most design companies actually if you see from a from a keen eye they are not and hmm. today customers are very well informed hmm very well informed yeah. so that's why and why they can't do it so like me they have to be product of forzheim or art center like me they have to work in general motors or volkswagen for some years and like me they have to attain sophistication and maturity over 20 25 years to be able to succeed hmm. that's where you get the experience from so you're saying maybe uh, along with all those credibilities even the patience is a yeah, key factor right. you have to stay at it of like course. for a long time and you have to be a good marketer ah. so if i go to any boardroom with a car company they have various executives in the in the conference room and uh, you know the boss will ask about this what about that so sir i have to find out i'll come back to you i never say that i say it immediately that's the knowledge base i have mm. today i would know how many mahindra cars are sold of each model but the marketing manager of mahindra he will not know spontaneously he will know from his subordinates mm, wow now that's the interest you have to have mm. i think what i am gathering through this conversation is uh, for a successful you know uh, entrepreneur in design i think he will have to think complete 360 yeah, degree exactly and he will have to be on his toes all the time and as you said when you are like you should treat that business or anything like you are you know as if your name is there on the block yeah. and you have to consider like take full ownership of it and then uh, just keep delivering quality and as you said that was very beautiful i felt uh, people are not focusing on value enough and i think that's the area where dc 
has always excelled yeah. they have provided because, lot of value because if you focus on value only then the customer will come to you know hmm. he's not going to come to you for some vanity change of exteriors you know and and exteriors especially in india if you talk of cars uh, nobody wants to spend because the traffic conditions are so poor parking conditions are so poor and you're not providing any tangible benefits to that hmm. you are providing uh, uh, some differentiation now how well that differentiation is if you see most of the studio work that people do is actually making the car look worse <laughs> is my view i when you can research and you'll understand the same thing okay because they don't they don't understand the fluency of design hmm so they will add a lot of material but they make a mess of it you know you mm-hmm. design or art is is knowing what to take out not what to put in hmm okay so sir i have this very uh, bold question probably uh, but let's say if somebody in today's time uh, if that person or that designer let's say he has a degree uh, not from a very reputed college like art center or forzheim uh, but if he has like very keen interest into you know customization and uh, creating all these added value related products into automotive design uh, and he wants to start his own uh, yeah. venture what would be your suggestion to him and what are the areas he should you know start looking into from this point on onwards so uh, he has to be affluent enough to start his own project affluent enough okay uh, because he has to have his own car he needs to have people and he has to have the facility mm. and uh, and he has to forget the work life balance he has to forget okay so you know i tell young designers that you know work harder forget your girlfriends you're older you'll succeed they'll all come back to you many <laughs> times more <laughs> so you know it's it's a lot of uh, in this day and age i don't know whether there's so much of distraction uh, i i personally feel the uh, you know the the i the cellular phone is a big uh, damager to people's careers and prospects because most of the time they are preoccupied with that mm. so when how do you have solitude to think or to do and invest in yourself but i i, I guess uh, there will be some people obviously i don't deny that but they'll have to go through this rut and i haven't seen anyone there are a lot of pretenders but anyone who can get an order i don't know i don't think so okay so affluency then uh, you need to have enough capital to set up a team set up a workshop let's say probably initial time you will have to mm. spend from your pocket then you forget about work life balance because you have yeah. to be absolutely committed yeah. and uh, on top of it i think just being patient uh, and not distracted all the time as you said no uh, girlfriends no <laughs> no girlfriend that's a big take away for the young designers i tell nial also <laughs> no work life no i tell him no work life <laughs> we don't have <laughs> okay after doing all these things uh, your next big design project came into picture uh, which was dc avanti and uh, i think that was quite a bold move i yeah. would say because that time first of all not so many people even now they are not brave enough to start their own venture into automotive design and you started it you had it and then you started this project of building a completely you know new brand new this sports car which is indian built what was the vision behind it and what did you felt so you know excited about yeah, that so, project so um you know all young males they hanker after a sports car hmm usually yeah and i remember when i was in my late teens at huge road in bombay there was this stc showroom which bought cars from diplomats and auctioned it and once in a while there there came a sports car 
with the reserve price and i would coax and you know harass my father to to bid for it and we would bid and it would go at three or four times the reserve price such was the demand wow so because they are very rare you know so i realized that if all youngsters in india would want a sports car where would they go they can't afford it hmm and it's a common uh, adage in the world that when you're young you cannot afford a sports car you can afford a sports car only when you're old enough so i thought i can change that wow developed okay. in india built hmm. in india designed in india so we had a if you see all our certification we have our uh, credibility from uh, world car makers about our design capability and we were developing cars for them mm -hmm. and we had a brand connect to the indian customer wanting to pay that kind of price that's for and and also a mahindra or tata would never get into a sports car mm. it's too small a project <clears throat> for them i'm still too, too low volume of project for them ah oh. that's how i got into that and also i wanted to de risk the dc design from a company that was dependent on me that was the whole essence of that yeah. okay awesome and i think uh, everybody knows like what happened after that which was pretty unfortunate that was uh, i pride myself on being a good businessman but here i made a big error in the sense i trusted a customer as an investor okay so i sold shares for a substantial amount and uh, uh, he failed to give me the full amount so he was my customer so i knew him before he gave me 50 crores so i started the program the program was of 300 crores and then i did uh, another deal with him he said you give me 225 crores and 51% of the company i'll give you 225 crores bo he gave me another 70 crores out of that and then demonetization struck and he could not give and i also had lost interest in avanti because uh, one of the feelings of avanti was that the markets felt that it needed a automatic transmission okay so i had lost that appetite and then of course i complained to the cops because my lawyer told me that put it on record uh, since he has cheated you you have to put it on record because tomorrow is the media or the income tax asks you you had a deal and you never collect you never you never paid you so have you got in cash hmm and you know that would put me in more trouble so i complained to the cops unfortunately for me parambit singh and sachin vaze were in the seat hmm because when they called him he actually turned around bribed them and you uh, and uh, this thing on me so it, it was whatever they said you know uh, duplicate registration of cars and all it was that one car which belonged to my partner which was lent to a finance company as a demo car which he sold to his front man to stage manage a crime with sachin vaze oh wow that's what happened wow and he had bail orders to prove it so that's i mean there are all kinds of people he was a jeweler you know mm. not a just jeweler my mistake was i should not have done a deal with a private investor i should have done a deal with a fund hmm that's why i said i went wrong but because i was so keen and i said i don't have to do the due diligence of a investment banker that takes 8 months 9 months 1 year i said i can get going so the in the urgency to get going i made that mistake in hindsight okay but the experience has been good all companies and i'm saying all have got into trouble in the initial stage but there's lamborghini ferrari bugatti all mm. and they were bought over by another company and then they have mm. grown to success as long as your product was good and as long as you are uh, i mean it's it a, for a com for a design company see first of all for a designer to have a entrepreneurship it's a big thing then to have a car manufacturing mm. so you know it's it's experience at least gained today mm. when we customize cars i know what is the regulation i know i cannot have more than 3 3 mm uh, i can't have less than 3.5 mm rear die mm. i know i can't have this i know i can't have that so I, which in the past i would never have known understood i think uh, 
दिस इज ऑल्सो क्वाइट एन इम्पॉर्टेंट लेसन फॉर द अस्पायरिंग डिजाइन ऑन्टरप्रनर्स बिकॉज फेल्यूअर्स आर मेन टू कम आई गेस इन दिस जर्नी बिकॉज देर आर सो मेनी थिंग्स विच कैन गो है फेलियर्स इज फाइन यू नो इज ऑफ्टन सेड दैट फेलियर इज अ स्टेपिंग स्टोन टू सक्सेस एब्राहम लिंकन सेड एंड डेविड कैमर सेड्स बट टू हैव burnished my reputation as as a crime which was not there hmm. that is what in india i think because the police are so corrupt that is something that uh we all entrepreneurs have to be careful about most of them are good hmm but this was the i mean look at it the guy who trapped me is in jail Yeah. He's never going to come out hmm. because his job was to extort. He extorted twenty-five crores out of me. He wanted to extort twenty-five crores out of me. I never had that kind of money. Hmm. So you're going to have these commercials as long as you don't lose your. Uh, after that, in DC too, I have not lost anything. I have not lost my credibility. I have not hmm. lost my people. I have not hmm. lost customers. So. at the yeah. end of the day you have to have the conviction in your own capability and want wanting to do what you want to do in life i mean at my age i could have said forget it i'll go and become a sadhu <laughs> but that doesn't help no yeah actually that's a, that's a very beautiful thing what you said uh what you want to do is very important and yeah. the focus on that probably lets you keep Yeah. committed to your yeah, longer yeah. vision is obsessive passion you got to have obsessive, obsessive that's the key word you must use obsessive everybody says i'm passionate then how come everybody doesn't become dc <laughs> because they're not obsessive they will mm-hmm. have 80% of passion mm. but obsessive passion is 99.99 very inspiring i must say all this story uh so now let's quickly talk about dc2 uh this is a kind of phoenix moment for you what no, no, so it is not a phoenix the avanti was a separate company hmm. called dc design okay dc2 is all about customization okay so it is the same uh, line it is the same uh, customers is the same people and uh, all our staff everything is same all the designs are same all the ipr are same we own the ipr so dc design had two arms one is a customization and one was a avanti Okay, so I took the customization out mm-hmm. and called it DC two. Okay, and that uh, was DC design. Okay, okay. understand. So it's not a phoenix at all. It is in fact continuation of continuation that. Continuation of the continuation of that. Okay. Otherwise, we would not have been able to achieve so much in so short a time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, awesome, sir. This conversation has been uh, immensely insightful and okay. uh, so many powerful. Uh, you know. Uh, words of wisdom you have already said if you have anything else to just uh, advise to the young designers who are let's say about to graduate or already graduated but lost in you know this uh, chaos as yeah. you said distractions what would be your suggestion to them it's the best time to be young in india uh, considering in the next 10 to 15 years india is going to grow much like china okay so the job opportunities are going to be huge and i can only talk from the automotive sector so we are already seeing a uh, very robust growth in the last two years we will continue to do so because each one like each one of us has a cell phone each one wants his own car hmm and a penetration of car vehicles or cars is only 30 per 1000 in china is 120 per 1000 Oh, the wow. united states is 975 per thousand so we have to go through that because all our uh, aspirations are same your your mind and american expression is same but we never had that growth in the economy or the you know uh, manufacturers giving having that capacity to deliver cars at affordable price so no better time than now to be young in india and no better time th- than now to be in the automotive sector because one thing is very important to know automotive sector is a huge entry barrier entry barrier okay there are 30 35 manufacturers in india 
and there is not a 36th one and there cannot be mm. and like other businesses you have you know anything that is flavor of the day you'll have 500 manufacturers but the automotive companies are very very because it takes a huge amount of capital so if you are selecting an automotive industry that industry is not going to die out mm. it's been there for 125 years is going to be there for another 25 years many other technologies have died out so so that that is one and uh, you know uh, whichever stream in the auto sector whether it's marketing whether it's service whether it's engineering whether it's design testing validation it's a huge chain mm. so it's a huge glorious future okay Awesome, sir. This has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for doing this. Pleasure. It's an honor to, you know, sit with you no, no. and have this conversation. So thank you for doing this. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Pleasure.